Theodora Porphyrogenita Greek, Theodora Theodora, AD 980–31 August 1056 was a Byzantine empress born into the Macedonian dynasty that ruled the Byzantine Empire for almost 200 years. She was co-empress with her sister Zoe for two months in 1042 and sole empress regnant from of January 1055 to 31 August 1056. She was the last ruler of the Macedonian line. Theodora's life was entwined with that of her older sister Zoe. In 1028 her father, Constantine VIII, attempted to extend the dynasty by marrying Theodora to the urban prefect of Constantinople, Romanos Argyros. Theodora refused, and Zoe was married to him instead. Three days later he became emperor. Angry that Theodora had been the first choice to marry Romanos, Zoe had her sister closely watched. After two foiled plots, Theodora was exiled to an island monastery in the Sea of Marmara. Twelve years later, the people of Constantinople rose against Michael V, Zoe's adopted son, and insisted that Theodora return to rule alongside her sister. After 65 days Zoe married again to Constantine IX, who assumed the imperial responsibilities. When Constantine IX died, the 74-year-old Theodora returned to the throne, in the teeth of fierce opposition from court officials and military claimants. For 18 months she was a strong empress before being struck down by a sudden illness and dying on 31 August 1056 aged 76. <laughs> Early life Theodora was the third and youngest daughter of the Byzantine Emperor Constantine VIII and Helena, daughter of Alypius. She was Porphyrogenita, born into the purple. This was the appellation for a child born in the capital to a reigning emperor. Her father became co-emperor in 962 and sole emperor in 1025. His reign as sole emperor lasted less than three years, from 15 December 1025 to 15 November 1028. As an eligible imperial princess, she was considered as a possible bride for the Holy Roman Emperor in the West, Otto III in 996. However, Theodora was overlooked in favor of her sister Zoe. Otto III died before any marriage could occur. Theodora's uncle Basil II prevented his nieces from marrying any of the Byzantine nobility, calculating that such a marriage would have given their husbands a claim on the imperial throne. As women, Theodora and Zoe were unable to exercise any state authority, their only say in this was in choosing, or more likely accepting or not, a husband who would acquire their authority upon marriage. Consequently, Theodora lived a life of virtual obscurity in the imperial gynoceum women's quarters. Basil II died childless in 1025 and Constantine VIII became sole emperor at the age of 65. As he had no sons, Theodora and Zoe were catapulted into the center of imperial politics. Intelligent and possessing a strong and austere character, Theodora defied her father by refusing to marry the man her father had chosen to succeed him, Romanos Argyros, stating that Romanos was already married, his wife having become a nun to allow Romanos to marry into the imperial family. Theodora further claimed that since Romanos and she were third cousins, it was too close a blood relationship for marriage to occur. Consequently, Constantine VIII chose Theodora's sister. Zoe married Romanos three days before her father died. With the accession of Romanos, Theodora prudently retreated back into the gynoceum, with its daily religious routines, but this did not save her from her sister's envy. Never forgiving Theodora for being their father's first choice, Zoe persuaded her husband to appoint one of his own men as the chief of Theodora's household, with orders to spy on her. Shortly afterwards, Theodora was accused of plotting to marry Prisian of Bulgaria and usurp the throne with him. Prisian was blinded and sent to a monastery, Theodora was not punished. In 1031 she was implicated in a similar conspiracy, this time with Constantine Diogenes, the Archon of Sirmium. Theodora was forcibly confined in the monastery of Petrion. During a visit, Zoe compelled her sister to take holy orders. Theodora remained there for the next eleven years, as Zoe managed the empire with her husbands, Romanos III and, after his death, Michael IV. Co-empress with Zoe With Michael IV's death in December 1041, Zoe adopted Michael's nephew, who was crowned as Michael V. Although he promised to respect Zoe, he promptly banished her to a monastery on the prince's islands on charges of attempted regicide. 
This treatment of the legitimate heir to the Macedonian dynasty caused a popular uprising in Constantinople, and on 19 April 1042, the people dethroned Michael V in support of not only Zoe, but Theodora as well. Michael V, desperate to keep his throne, initially brought Zoe back from Prince's Island and displayed her to the people, but the population rejected his proposal that he continue to rule alongside Zoe. Key members of the court decided that flighty Zoe needed a co ruler, and backed the people's demand that it should be Theodora. A delegation, headed by the patrician Constantine Cabasilas, went to the monastery at Petrion to convince Theodora to become co empress. Theodora, accustomed to a life of religious contemplation, rejected their pleas out of hand, and fled to the convent chapel to seek sanctuary. Constantine and his retinue pursued her, forcibly dragged her out and exchanged her monastic clothes for imperial ones. At an assembly at Hagia Sophia, the people escorted the now furious Theodora and proclaimed her empress with Zoe. After crowning Theodora, the mob stormed the palace, forcing Michael V to escape to a monastery. Zoe immediately assumed power and tried to force Theodora back to her monastery, but the Senate and the people demanded that the two sisters should jointly reign. As her first act, Theodora was called upon to deal with Michael V. Zoe, weak and easily manipulated, wanted to pardon and free Michael, but Theodora was far more strict. She initially guaranteed Michael's safety before ordering that he be blinded and spend the rest of his life as a monk. With Michael V dealt with, Theodora refused to leave Hagia Sophia until she had received a formal invitation from Zoe, some 24 hours after they had been crowned. Officially Theodora was the junior empress, and her throne was situated slightly behind Zoe's on all public occasions. In practice she was the driving force behind the joint administration. The sisters administered the empire, focusing on curbing the sale of public offices and on the administration of justice. Although contemporary historian Michael P. Sellis claimed the joint reign was a complete failure, John Silitzes stated that they conscientiously rectified the abuses of the previous reigns. Although Theodora and Zoe appeared together at meetings of the Senate or when they gave public audiences, it was soon apparent that their joint reign was under considerable strain. Still jealous of Theodora, Zoe had no desire to administer the empire, but she would not allow Theodora to conduct public business alone. Court factions formed behind each empress. After two months of increasing acrimony between them, Zoe decided to search for a new husband, thereby denying Theodora the opportunity to increase her influence through her obvious talents for governing. She eventually married Constantine IX, on the 11th of June 1042, and the management of the empire reverted to him. Although Theodora and Zoe continued to be recognized as empresses, and although Theodora continued to appear at all official functions, power devolved onto her brother-in-law. Nevertheless, Theodora exerted influence at court, as demonstrated by her ordering the arrest and blinding of John the Eunuch, the powerful administrator who had been the chief minister of Romanos III, the brother of Michael IV, and the uncle of Michael V. He had lived in exile after the fall of Michael V. Constantine IX's preferential treatment of his mistress in the early part of his reign caused rumors that he was planning to murder Theodora and Zoe. This led to a popular uprising by the citizens of Constantinople in 1044, which came dangerously close to actually harming Constantine who was participating in a religious procession along the streets of Constantinople. The mob was only quieted by the appearance on a balcony of Zoe and Theodora, who reassured the mob they were in no danger of assassination. Return to power After Zoe's death in 1050, Theodora seems to have retired to a convent, leaving Constantine IX to rule alone until his own death on of January 1055. As Constantine lay dying, he was persuaded by his counselors, chiefly the Logothetes Tou Dromu John, to ignore the rights of Theodora and to pass the throne to the Duke of the Byzantine theme of Bulgaria, Nikephoros Protoon. However, Theodora preempted their plans when, despite her advanced age, she vigorously asserted her right to rule. She came out of retirement and convened the Senate, and the Imperial Guard proclaimed her Emperor. Shortly before Constantine's death, a purge of senior officials and the leadership of the European military units followed. Nikephoros Bryennios, whom the Western Tagmata apparently wanted to proclaim emperor instead, was dismissed and exiled on Theodora's orders, after which she confiscated his estates and banished his supporters from court. Her second period of rule proceeded where the first left off. With her firm administration, she controlled the unruly nobles and checked numerous abuses. 
She damaged her reputation, however, with excessive severity toward private enemies and undue employment of such menials as Leo Paraspondolos as her advisors. Military and court offices were filled by her household eunuchs, and such able commanders as Isaac Komnenos were replaced with minor functionaries. Determined to centralize as much power in her hands as possible, she presided in person in the Senate and heard appeals as supreme judge in civil cases. Her appointment of clerics offended the patriarch Michael Carolarios, who considered this the duty of men, not women. Theodora was fit, well, and active and disinclined to face her own mortality, despite her age of 76. The patriarch Michael Carolarios advocated that Theodora advance a subject to the throne through marriage to her, something which would have assured the succession, but she refused to consider marriage, no matter how token. She also refused to name an heir to the throne. Theodora became gravely ill with an intestinal disorder in late August 1056. On 31 August her advisers, chaired by Leo Paraspondolos, met to decide who to recommend to her as a successor. According to P. Sellis, they selected Michael Bringas, an aged civil servant and former military finance minister whose main attraction was that, "...he was less qualified to rule than he was to be ruled and directed by others." Theodora was unable to speak, but Paraspondolos decided that she had nodded at an appropriate moment. Hearing of this the Patriarch refused to believe it. Eventually he was persuaded and Bringas was crowned as Michael VI. Theodora died a few hours later and with her death, the Macedonian dynasty's 189-year rule ended. See also List of Byzantine emperors